and welcome to today's lesson, Area of Parallelograms. We're going to start our lesson by looking at some things that parallelograms and rectangles have in common, and then a way that they are different. So we notice just looking at the shapes, they look very similar. So uh, something that they both have in common, if you look across, top and bottom have the same measurement, so they're the same uh, distance across on a rectangle. And the same is true for parallelograms. So if you were to count the distance on the um, graph paper, you would see that it's the same distance for the yellows. And then if I was to look over here, uh, going across, these are the same measurement. And then if I was to look at these two red lines, the diagonals, they are also um, the same measurement. So we know that rectangles and parallelograms have opposite sides congruent. So the big difference between them is their angle measures. And this makes sense because a rectangle is a specific type of parallelogram. So in this type of parallelogram, you have four congruent angles. They're all going to be 90 degree angles. And in a parallelogram, you do not have that. Just the ones across from each other have the same measurement. So let's take this information into an example where we're going to go ahead and try to create a rectangle from a parallelogram. So if we have this on graphing paper, we can go ahead and make a cut in our parallelogram that creates a triangle and then the rest of the shape. And what I'm going to do with this triangle that I cut off, I'm just going to move it over and you can see it makes a rectangle. So a couple of important things about this. We're going to first go ahead and try to find the area of this rectangle and then we're going to relate that to the area for parallelogram. So we have a width on this shape. If you were to count going down one, two, three, four, five. So we have a width of five. If we were to count going across, we have a length of eight. So for the area for a rectangle, if we were just looking at this as a rectangle, we know the area is length times width. So our area here is just going to be eight times five or 40 units squared. Now let's put this back in the form of a parallelogram. So if I was to move this triangle back, notice that the length is not any different. It stays exactly the same because this is the same distance. And the width, well, we don't have a width anymore because we have a parallelogram. So for an area of a parallelogram, we actually need to know the height of the shape. Five is the height because going from top to bottom is still five. So if I was counting one, two, three, four, and five, but then instead of this one being length, it now is going to turn into the base because this height meets this base at a 90 degree angle right here. We can see that that is the 90 degree angle, just the same as triangles. However, when I'm doing the area for a parallelogram, because I know the area of a rectangle is just multiplying the two sides together for the area of a parallelogram, I'm just going to multiply the base and the height together. So for this one, I actually still end up with eight times five. So the area for this parallelogram is also 40 units squared. So what we did is we took this part of the shape, we cut it to make a triangle and we added it to the front. That is how we derive our formula for the area of a parallelogram. So let's try an example of one of them that looks a little bit different. Sometimes you're gonna have parallelograms like these where when you try to find the height, um, it, you, there's no spot where you could cut this shape and it goes directly from top to bottom. So on this one, if I was to look and I was to move this line all the way across, there's nowhere on the shape where the top and bottom are inside the shape. So what we actually do is just draw the height going from the top to the bottom on the side of the shape. Now that's going to still need us to create a 90 degree angle for our base. So what I'm going to do is use this part and just go straight across and it makes that 90 degree angle. So you might see a problem that looks like this and we're going to solve it the same way as we solve any other parallelogram. So we know our height from top to bottom of this shape is seven foot so that they're saying from the very top to the bottom, it's seven foot. For the base, it's not talking about the dotted line. It's talking about this section of the shape. And that ends up being two feet. So our base for this shape is just going to be two. So area of a parallelogram is area equals base times height. And then in this one, we're going to substitute in two for the base and seven for the height. So the area of this parallelogram 
is 14 feet squared. So all we're doing is taking the height and the base and multiplying together. For our final example, we're going to look at one on a geo board. So if I was to look to see, uh, I would still need the height and the base. So if I was to look from top to bottom, I am looking for my height. So remember, area equals base times height. And if I was to go in this section right here, I could see that my height top to bottom is four. And then it makes a 90 degree angle both here and here. So I can use either of those for the base. So I'm going to use the top here and I end up with one, two, so a base of two. So my area for my parallelogram is two times four or eight units squared. Let's recap. If you cut a parallelogram at the height, the shapes can be rearranged to create a rectangle. And just like length times width for rectangles, parallelogram area multiplies base and height, which creates the formula area equals base times height. That wraps up this lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe for this and other videos. Until next time.